Let's get to it. To it. You are locked on fantasy basketball. Your daily podcast on fantasy basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at Basketball Monster. Dot com and you can find me as always on Twitter at redrock underscore bebo. We're having a second go at this live show because the live streaming has been a real pain in the ass. So we're going to be looking at uh, well, this is hopefully going out live on Facebook as we speak. So hopefully you guys can see that. I say we because it's not just me trying to work out what's going on with this trade deadline. I am joined by my basketball monster colleague, and that is of course Greg Ehrenberg. As Greg runs in, we realise this could get dangerous. Greggy, welcome. Nice. I, I think the technical issues were worth it just so I got to hear the sound drop twice. Absolutely. I think everyone uh, well, everyone else listening doesn't get to hear it twice, but uh, but at <laughs> least you do. And that is the uh, that is the main thing. So hopefully this is going out live now. I uh, I don't know whether it is, but we will uh, we will hope that that is the case. If not, we're just going to uh, we're going to see it happen uh, later on in the in the day as it gets uh, uploaded in the in the regular regular part we see uh well actually we've just seen a trade go down as we're as we're speaking now this happened the last time we started to go live with uh what's his name um noah vonley no noah vonley just got traded actually from the blazers to the bulls for some person i have never heard of the draft rights of a player whose name is escaping me for now that's in a second round pick in there also. But yeah, definitely there's uh, some sort of weird trade going down. Anyway, Noel Vonley is headed to Chicago. Is there any impact on that at all? Anything going on? Uh, probably not in terms of fantasy pickup. Uh, I think that Noah Vonley as a real life player is a decent future role player. I think he has a role in the NBA. But I, I can't see him having too significant of a role for the Bulls. I still think they're going to play Bobby Portis over him. The only way that I think he could have enough minutes to be relevant is if Robin Lopez ends up getting moved at some point today also. Yeah, that's 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 a huge part of it I guess. If uh if Lopez does get moved it does yeah, bring some value there to um uh to Vonley but we're not sure of that just yet. There's still a lot of big men in Chicago, Portis, Markin and Lopez, Felicio. I would say Vonley is ahead of Felicio at this point but we still he's still young enough to provide some value but not someone that we're really looking to uh to you know, go and add in, in really any fantasy leagues at this point. Oh, here's the guy they traded, Milikan Rakovic. The Bulls traded the rights for uh, for him. So pretty much Portland just trying to save themselves some luxury tax by getting out of Vonley's contract and the Bulls getting a, they get a second round draft pick in that trade as well. Now you, you did reference Emmanuel Moutier. We talked about it a little bit before. Let's go back into it and talk about it. Now Moutier goes to the New York Knicks. Uh, Doug McDermott goes to the Dallas Mavericks and Devin Harris goes to the Nuggets. The big one that people will want to know about is Moutier. Does he start now? Does he have enough minutes to be a fantasy viable player? So on Moutier, it's going to be probably not for me. My one concern as a Knicks fan is that they give Moutier minutes that Neil Aquino would otherwise be playing. I think that the trade is a decent gamble for the Knicks just because it has maybe a 0.1% chance of upside and not really a lot of downside for them. I do hope going forward that the Knicks approach this by less minutes for Jarrett Jack. Maybe Jack even falls out of the rotation altogether because the Knicks aren't really playing for anything this season now with the injury to Porzingis. Not that they really were anyway, but I would like to see Jarrett Jack fall out of the rotation now, really give Neil Aquina significant minutes, have Moutier as the backup, and just see what they could get out of those guys. And... I don't think that Moutier is a standard league guy. Maybe 20 team leagues he's worth taking a flyer on just because we don't really know what the minutes from are going to look like. But maybe there's a chance that he works himself into like a 28 to 30 minute role. Yeah, look, there is yeah, there is Nila Kina there, obviously, Burke and and Jack. So there's no clear path that Moutier... And Moutier hasn't been good at all throughout his career. So there's no... He's not coming in and demanding these minutes. He, yeah, Frank's already a better defender than him, probably a better passer, probably already a better shooter. Yeah. 
Um, so, and clearly more of the future of New York than what Moutier is. They didn't give up very much to uh, to get him there, but it's worth having a look. I'd love to see Nilakina and Moutier just take all of those point guard minutes as we move forward. I, I don't know whether that'll be the case because Trey Burke is still there. Hopefully this does remove Jack from the rotation, but yeah, it's not something that I'm looking at Moutier as a, as a standard league sort of guy. Had a couple of other trades that have gone down. Jim Ennis has gone from the Grizzlies to the Pistons. He just slides in there as a, a backup to Stanley Johnson and Reggie Bullock. So really just a deeper league guy. While Bryce Johnson heads to the uh, to the Grizzlies and he's going to be behind Jarrell Martin and Jermichael Green and Deontay Davis in the rotation. Really hard to see him having any sort of impact. And the other one, Jameer Nelson goes to the Pistons in exchange for Willie Reed. Willie Reed uh, will be bought out. Nelson will move in as a third stringer when Reggie Jackson is healthy and maybe ahead of Dwight Bikes uh, as the backup there so more deeper league stuff not really huge amounts for us to talk about but let's talk about Cleveland Greg the situation that pretty much everyone will want to hear about that is they get Rodney Hood they get George Hill they get Jordan Clarkson and they get Larry Nance and they lose Isaiah Thomas Channing Fry, Jay Crowder and Derek Rose along with Dwayne Wade so five guys out four guys in to me the clear pickups are George Hill and Larry Nance Jr. Nance should start start as the Starting power forward, replacing Kevin Love and uh, Jay Crowder, who was who was there recently. So, do you see those as the two clear um, development guys, or did the guys to yeah, add so, through? Yeah. So George Hill, I think, is a really good fit next to LeBron, and overall, I do think that this trade is going to help the Cavs just as a team and their cohesiveness going forward. The pieces fit together much better now. George Hill is shooting. Uh, I think it was forty five percent from three this year. I think he's really going to help with the floor spacing. We've seen George Hill be like a top 60, top 70 player when he's been the minutes in better situations in the past. So as long as George Hill stays healthy, I think he's going to be a must-own guy in standard leagues going forward. He'll also be a really strong roto player because of the good percentages and low turnover rate. So I like George Hill a lot. And then Larry Nance also, I think he does a lot of the things that Tristan Thompson does. He's just better at all of them. So if we look at Larry Nance's numbers as a starter with the Lakers this year, he was playing 24 minutes per game, uh, nine points, seven rebounds, a steal and a half, and then about half a block. So I think good percentages. Uh, he could definitely help in the steals category. So Nance, I'm not totally convinced that the, that the uh, Cavs are going to end up starting him, but I think he's worth a pickup probably in 14 team leagues or so. Just in case he does get moved into the starting lineup, I think he could provide some value. What do you, if they don't start Nance, what are they going to do there instead? Hmm. I would assume that he, I think he would probably, he's probably either going to start and play around 30 minutes or maybe come off the bench and play like a 22 to 24 minute role. Does that sound about right to you? I think, I think, um, what have, what's Kyle got him projected at? Let's have a look had the projections up here. I, th I think that, I think, yeah, I think he's going to be 24 to 26, maybe no, 28 minutes. Cause uh, again, who else is, um, unless they play Jeff green, um, in that spot, that that's their other option. They could get some Chetty Osman in there a little bit, but I think they're going to have to play Nance at least 25 to 26 minutes. And that's going to make him a top 100 guy. I think he is probably at this point, the clear winner. This front court has really nobody chaining fries gone as well now. So we've got Tristan Thompson and Larry Nance. And the other guy there is, is Jeff Green. And that's really it. And as, is Ante Zizic going to play? Like, uh, who else have they got in that front court until Kevin Love comes back? There's no one else there. Is LeBron going to yeah, play I power forward? The the other thing that I could see is if they're just going to go small lineups where they have uh, Rod Hood out there with George Hill and LeBron, maybe Corver picks up some more minutes also, uh, and then like Tristan Thompson or Nance getting some of those center minutes. So it just depends how small of lineups they play. I do think that there is the upside for Nance to end up playing 30 minutes. Yeah, he's got a huge upside. He is a guy to own. Uh, George Hill is a guy to own. They are both clearly ahead of guys like Emmanuel Moutier in terms of their trade value. Um, what about Rod Hood? I don't see much changing from him. He was playing like 28, 29 minutes a night. He's not all of a sudden going to become this multi-categorical producer getting steals and rebounds and assists and all this stuff. He's going to score. He's going to shoot. That's what he's going to do. He's going to be battling J.R. Smith there for minutes. But with Isaiah Thomas and Dwayne Wade out, you see Hill and Hood taking those roles respectively. So Hood's probably going to lose a couple of minutes. Or you could see Smith, J.R. Smith losing some of those minutes also, although Ty Lue has been a little bit reticent to do that. But Hood, I think he's just basically the same sort of guy he was in Utah. 
Yeah, um, I think the biggest issue with Rodney Hood is just can he stay healthy? Yeah. And when he is healthy, he does good things when he's on the floor. He's uh, He provides threes, pretty decent scoring numbers, uh, a couple assists, a few rebounds. So definitely if you're if he's on the wire if he's on the waiver wire and your team needs three pointers, he's definitely a good pickup in that situation. Yeah, look that that's what he's going to provide. So we have to remember the guys that, that have left with uh, with Thomas Shumpert who wasn't playing at all. So he does there's zero minutes there and, and Wade. So it's it's Thomas and Wade's minutes that are going to go to Hill and they're going to go to Hood as well. So yeah, that's that's the value there. Uh, yeah, not again, not much is changing with Hood because he's not all of a sudden going to become this guy who can produce in multiple different categories. I guess the other guy that's coming to Cleveland that we need to pay attention to is Jordan Clarkson, and that's another player that's going to have some sort of an impact on what Hood can do. I, I don't see Clarkson as a must own guy. I don't think that he's a very good player, and he's going to move into a role clearly that is behind. Um, clearly behind George Hill and to me behind Hood and Smith as well. He's probably going to take the Derrick Rose role, which is what, 13 minutes per game? Really, maybe he gets a, f a few more minutes than that. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh on him, but to me, he is he does not go to a better situation and he's not a guy that I'm looking to grab uh, in any 12 or probably even 14 team league, to be honest. Do you see it a different way? Do you see him having a different, different value? No, and I think the other thing to keep in mind too is that with the Lakers this year, Jordan Clarkson is a 28% usage rating. Yep. And that is almost definitely going down playing with LeBron yeah, James. No, no doubt. Because, because one of the main reasons I think that Isaiah Thomas got moved from the Cavs, other than that it seems that, as Josh would say, he's a bit of a shit bloke, uh, <laughs> it, is the chemistry just didn't work. And I think LeBron was really frustrated by the amount of ball handling Isaiah Thomas was doing, the amount of shots that he was taking with LeBron on the floor. And there is no way that I see LeBron standing for playing with Jordan Clarkson having a 28% usage rating. Yep. Um, yeah, there's, there's no way that's going to happen. It's a, there, is, there is absolutely zero chance that this is going to, to go down. Now, the other guy that uh, that moved on from uh, Cleveland is Derek Rose, who went to Utah, who we bought out. And of course, the Minnesota Timberwolves are looking to sign him. This, this could not be a worse move. Derek Rose is not an NBA caliber player anymore. He is not better than Jeff Teague. He is not better than Tyus Jones. Tom Thibodeau makes some baffling decisions. I didn't like the addition of, of Taj Gibson. Yeah, the offense has been good this year, and Taj has played well, but it still wasn't the most common sense move. His coaching in terms of not involving Carl Anthony Towns in the offense enough has been disturbing. His insistence on playing large minutes is a pain in the ass. The defense on that last play yesterday was absolutely asinine and made no sense. And if he brings Derek Rose in and starts playing him minutes over other guys that deserve it, um, then that they deserve not to win a playoff series if that's the case. We'll see how that all goes down. But no, there is no value in uh, in Derek Rose um, unless you see something different, Greg. Uh, I don't, but I'm sure that there is a large section of Twitter that sees it differently. Yeah, shout out to uh, Mr. Crom1. Um, <laughs> Let's um. What, what else? Oh, Isaiah Thomas heads to the Lakers. Luke Walton has said he's going to play uh, Lonzo and Isaiah Thomas together. Absolutely no idea why they couldn't have done that with D'Angelo Russell and Lonzo Ball. Uh, Thomas is a guy who does not seem to care about uh, how things fit around him. He is going to get his shots. He's going to do what he does, and he doesn't seem to uh, yeah, care how he fits in with anything else. So there's going to be an impact there. Obviously, losing Jordan Clarks, and there's that minutes for Thomas to come in, but that's going to impact the other players. So everyone's thinking, oh, what do you do with Josh Hart? Is he a must-own now? Like I think it's, his, it's a worse situation for Josh Hart unless they decide to just go with him fully over Contavious Caldwell Pope. But he now is the fourth guard, Lonzo, Thomas, KCP, and Hart as that fourth guard settles in at 20 minutes per game, even though he's been playing really well with with Lonzo out. I, I just don't see him being able to maintain anywhere close to that value. Do you? No, and I would prefer to see the Lakers start Josh Hart, but that oh, doesn't seem like it's going to be this. What's that? Yeah, that's exactly. Oh, that's what I would want to happen okay. too. Uh, I just don't see that happening. Isaiah Thomas appears to be a massive pain in the ass. There's already been some reports on Twitter, and obviously we don't know how accurate this is, except through Thomas's agent, apparently he's saying that he will not come off the bench with the Lakers. Mm. So he, he doesn't have a, like, To be honest, he doesn't have a choice. Uh, he can say he won't come off the bench. What's he going to do? Go and crack the shits and not play? Contract, so. well, they, they, just send him home then. Uh, you're not going to come off the bench. Who is this bloke that thinks he can go and dictate to every franchise, this is what I'm, I'm not coming off the bench? I don't give a shit who you think you are. Yeah, you, you, yeah, cool, you're not coming off the bench. Good on you. Not your choice. Either you don't play and you look even more like a shit bloke, 
or you just suck it up and deal with what your role is. These players, man, like he is he has got the huge chip on his shot. And I understand what he did for Boston playing and getting teeth knocked out, playing after his sister died, all that stuff was great. But some of the decisions that he's made throughout the course of his career have been uh, confusing to say the to say the least. And he's not helping his value as a free agent heading no. into the offseason because I think that everybody's going to look at him going into free agency now and just saying this guy is a massive pain in the ass and nobody wants to play with him. It's going to lessen his value. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, we had another trade that's just gone down now. We've got Dante Cunningham going to Brooklyn in exchange for Rashad Vaughn to the Pelicans. Um, the Pelicans' front court depth is just nothing. Now, Cunningham was out of the rotation completely. They were running with Diallo, Miritich, and Anthony Davis in that front court with Emeka Okafog being the fourth man there. Vaughn moves on to the wing. It's interesting that at least he can shoot, so maybe he can replace Rajon Rondo in the rotation. We'll see how that goes in its entirety. I don't know exactly. I don't think Vaughn's going to have any value. I don't think Cunningham will be probably an upgrade over a guy like Quincy Acey, but when Rondé Hollis-Jefferson's back, his value... He's just one of the one of the worst fantasy players in the NBA, though, Dante Cunningham. We've seen him get 30 minutes a night this season and do absolutely nothing with it, so really very little to see uh, there with that deal. The other one, Channing Fry goes to the Lakers. The Lakers' big man situation's thinned out a little bit now. We've got Randall, Kuzma, Lopez, and Fry. I would say if Brookie Lopez is available, I would go and add him now. It solidifies Kuzma and Randall also as well. Do you see it that way? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think Brook Lopez stands to benefit the most from this situation. And I think it's also interesting that they've already been playing him more minutes in recent games. So it seemed like his minutes were trending upward even before this trade happened. Yep. Yep, definitely. So he's a guy to add of Kuzma. He'd been struggling, but he, he's make sure he is owned. And uh, and Julius Randle, although, of course, more trades could be going down at some point. Um, what else is uh, anything else? That's, oh, yeah, uh, the Utah guy. So Jay Crowder replaces Joe Johnson. I think he almost slides into that exact same role. Maybe we see two or three minutes move away from Derek Favors. But Crowder was not good. He was not good in Dallas. He was solid in Boston. I think he was a little bit overrated and he was putrid in Cleveland. So which which Jay Crowder do we get? Do we get the one that exceeded his expectations playing for a good coach? The one who was terrible playing for a, a bad coach uh, in Ty Lu, and now he goes to another good coach again. What's what's the thought on Crowder? Where would you say place him in terms of priority pickups behind uh, Nance, Hill, um, you know, Lopez, those sort of players who have benefited today? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest issues with Crowder is he can't play worse than what he played in Cleveland. That's no, that, that's sure. true. Yep. But, but the issue with his overall value is that even though he can't play worse than he played in Cleveland, Cleveland played such a fast pace, and he was playing alongside LeBron. Like, Ricky Rubio has played really well recently, and he's a great passer. But I'm just concerned if he couldn't produce value in the Cleveland offense, how is he going to produce value in the Utah offense, even if he's going to shoot the ball marginally better yeah i i don't i don't say it again is is he going to start over joe ingles i i don't think so um is he going to start over Derek favors i don't think so i think he takes on that uh, joe johnson role he takes jonas Shurepko's minutes and and that's sort of where he sits so yeah behind nance behind lopez behind hill as pickups behind even hood i would guess at, at that sort of a, a stage but I don't see him being a a must own guy. I thought he was you know, overrated in Boston myself. I wasn't a massive a massive fantasy fan of his. A lot of his value came from a super high steals rate and um, uh, probably an un, unexpected field goal percentage, and that's clearly dropped off. I don't really see too much changing for him in um, in uh, in Utah, um, Sacramento. A lot of people ask me the question, you know, what, what does this mean for Bogdan Bogdanovich? And this this point never gets through to people. No, Joe Johnson's not a shooting guard. He is a power forward. He has not been a shooting guard for many, many years. Literally nothing changes in a negative way for Bogdan. There's no George Hill anymore, so we're not going to see any De'Aaron Fox, George Hill backcourts. If anything, it's a better situation for Bogdan Bogdanovich. Frank Mason the third will be coming back. He'll assume those backup point guard roles. Or role, but Joe Johnson coming, uh, Malachi Richardson's, all, Richardson's also been shipped out of there. Joe Johnson coming doesn't impact Bogdan, to, in my opinion, at all. 
it, it, it might in Dave Yeager's opinion. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, but but, he, but he's not. He, they don't play the same position. Is it, the, people still think that Joe Johnson is a... It's like people think that Joe Johnson is a shooting guard. They still think that Thaddeus Young is a small forward. Like, these are positions they haven't... They think Nick Muratich is a small forward. I guess because that's some of the designation they get on fantasy sites. Like, they're listed as those positions. They are not those positions at all. So, Johnson is not going to be playing any shooting guard minutes. It's not going to impact Bogdan. It's not going to impact Bud Heald. It's not going to impact De'Aaron Fox. It, it might take some minutes away from Zach Randolph, which is totally fine because we know that Randolph's been playing every single game at the moment. Sorry, sorry to cut you off for a sec because it's relevant. It looks like Joe Johnson's being waived also. Okay, well, there you go. So we don't need to talk too much there uh, about Joe. He is being waived. He'll go sign somewhere and be a, a useful bench piece, but no impact there in Sacramento. They also traded Malachi Richardson for Bruno Caboclo and they are waving Bruno. I have absolutely no idea. Why, why would you wave Caboclo? Yeah, I don't know. He was um, it, not that he was some no. prospect with a really high floor, except he was somebody who people have said like he's a year away from being a year away, and was somebody who at least seemed like he had some upside as a prospect, even if the chances of him reaching it are very slim. I mean, for such a low salary, and I just don't see the harm in holding on to somebody like him. I I don't I, I don't understand it uh, for a team that wants to develop young guys and, and yeah look he hasn't been good where we we know that bruno hasn't been good but this is an opportunity for they had no small forwards on this team at all their small forwards were vince carter it was malachi richardson who they just got rid of there's no small forwards on this justin jackson just play him over vince carter get him in there play him 15 minutes a night and if it works you know what fantastic you've got his you've got his restricted rights and then you can and then you can go from there and, and, and see what happens. But to just wave him for, for literally no reason. Like, what is the reason? Well, how do you know that Vince Carter isn't part of the future? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unless Vivek is invested in some sort of um, reverse aging machine or, or a time machine or, or anything like that. I, I, I just... And it's, it's completely minimal in terms of the overall impact of the whole day. But it just makes no sense why you would why you would actually just drop this guy or wave this guy um given this given the way that things are it just i don't know it's it's very very weird to me yeah and then as you had pointed out on twitter the other day since the king said they were going to rest their veterans what was it vince carter played in 45 percent of the games and has played in 70 percent of the games since then and they just completely stopped resting veterans also. They haven't done it the last few games. So it, it's really confusing trying to figure out what Dave Yeager is doing or what they even see as the direction of the team right now. Yeah, look, I know they've had some injuries, but if you're developing youngsters and resting veterans, there's no reason that you're just Papiana should be DMP CDing in these games so that Costa Kufos and Zach Randolph can play 30-plus minutes a night. And then you bring in another, um, a another young guy and... Yeah, and, and then you wave him. The the common sense or the lack of common sense uh, absolutely astounds me um, with what they're doing. Um, Devin Harris moving into Denver. Uh, is there anything, anything to say with that? It's probably not. Uh, the only thing I would say is that if JJ Barea is available in 14 team leagues or so, I think that he would be worth a pickup just because the minutes have been down a little bit recently, except when he was getting more minutes in like the 25 to 28 range about a month or so ago, he was really producing good assist numbers and was a decent fantasy asset. So I think that he could be somebody who benefits a little bit with Devin Harris uh, off the team now. Yeah, and in, 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 Doug McDermott could just come in and take those minutes anyway because Harris was playing a ton of small forward there and McDermott can play some of Maxi Kleber's minutes. Is, I don't think much is impacted with Dwight or with uh, the other, not yeah, Dwight Powell or Dirk Nowitzki. I don't think much happens there. And Harrison Barnes, of course, isn't impacted. Just really, apart from the, the Cavs stuff, this, this is what uh, Woj was tweeting yesterday that don't expect major stuff. There'll be little small pieces that get moved all around the place and uh, that's probably... Probably about it. We still haven't heard any news on Tyreek Evans with 15 minutes to go here in this uh, for this trade deadline. This is something that I did talk about that he might not necessarily get moved and he might be back in Memphis playing those similar minutes to what he was doing before. It's not like that Tyreek being there was causing them to win games. So it's not like a, a tank move or anything along those lines because they were still... He, they were still losing those games, but it does impact guys like Andy Harrison, uh, Wayne Seldon, Dylan Brooks, all of those, uh, all of those um, players. But we'll, uh, 
We'll see how that goes with Tyreek. He's, I guess, the guy we're really waiting on now at this point. We haven't heard anything on Marco Bellinelli at all. I guess, I guess, Greg, the reason they're not getting traded is because they weren't being um, being showcased for trades. I guess because they sat them out, so therefore no one wants them because you, you need to showcase guys to uh, to get them traded. Oh, for sure, because there's 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 no way for people to look at the last ten years of Tyreek Evans being in the league or eight years, whatever it's been. It, it's all based on what he's done over the last two weeks. If you haven't seen Tyreek Evans play for two weeks, then who knows if he's any good at basketball? Exactly. I've got a, a tweet here I've seen from uh, Locked On Blazers host Eric Garcia Gunderson. He says, I, th I think Bonley can still be a productive player and he's already better than Bobby Portis. Not a bad move for the Bulls. I agree with that. Bobby Portis is just not good, a good player. He looks flashy because he flexes and he and he screams and he and he shoots a lot of shots and he misses a lot of shots, but he is one of the worst defending big men in the entire NBA. He is a black hole on offense. He is a frustrating teammate to play with and he is shit uh, as as a as a player, so we will see how that works with Von. Le I would love to see the Bulls give Von Lay a chance over Portis. I think he can do way more than what Bob can do, but we don't know. I, I still think that we want to own Portis in fantasy. He's a much better fantasy player than what. Uh, so Portis is a much better fantasy player than what Von Lay is, but th there could be an impact in on the minutes there. You don't think Portis helps the Bulls in the locker room though. Oh yeah, massive, ma massive, massive part of there. The guy that doesn't pass and doesn't defend and punches blokes in the face. Uh, huge locker room. But who knows with that locker room, considering they all sided with Portis over Miritich, who knows what's going on with uh, with that team. Um, where else uh, are we? Not, nothing else going down. This is what we, we're hearing rumors of a, of a Kenneth Fareed trade. Again, just these are players who are just not good um, and are not going to have any impact, really. The Isaiah Thomas one is weird. Is there any chance the Lakers re-sign him, do you think? No. Uh, and if, <laughs> they, if they do, if they... I think I've lost Greg there. Greg, where are you? Hello? I don't know where Greg has gone. We'll have to wait for Greg to run in. Um, excuse me while I sort out these technical issues. We're back. Yep, I've got you. Uh, got you back now after that. Uh, um, that's a good question. Um, we were talking. I don't even know what we were talking about at that point. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I will. I, whether Isaiah Thomas will be re-signed at the Lakers? That's when you cut out. So uh, let's give your thoughts on that again.
Yeah, that's that, that's that's a weird one to me. Why why they would try that? They're not going to. I'm sure that he's not going to be re-signing there um, next season. So we, I don't think there's too much of an issue. But in terms of his value this season in LX, we, we only really sort of briefly touched on Thomas in, uh, in Los Angeles. Do you think that he can come close to approaching Boston as Thomas last season? I don't. Do you think he can get anywhere near that? Or do you think he can be better than what he's been so far? Maybe that's a more accurate statement. Yeah, he hasn't looked he hasn't looked awesome there. Of course, he's a clear fantasy guy to to own, but um, yeah, look, he's not approaching what he did last season. I don't know what his minutes are going to be like. They said they're going to run him big minutes. They didn't say they will start him. There's just a lot of moving parts still there in uh, in Los Angeles. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to give him minutes over Alex Caruso or uh, or Gary Payton the second the mitten. I'm only uh, taking the piss there, of course. We'll see how that all pans out. Not too worried about what Lon yeah, Lonzo's value. It's not predicated on volume scoring or shooting. The other one, actually, we haven't talked about this, is Dwayne Wade going to Miami. What do you think this means for Wade going back down there? What does it mean for guys like Tyler Johnson, Joshy Richardson, uh, the Duke, Wayne Ellington, Justice Winslow? How is that all going to be impacted, do you think, in Miami? Yeah. No, I, I don't see him having that sort of value uh, there. Also, I don't see much, you know, much like I talked about with Lonzo, it, Josh Richardson's value doesn't come from this huge usage percentage of him being a 25 usage guy and scoring 20 points per game. It comes from getting assists, rebounds, steals, and blocks. Basically, yeah, Richardson's very similar to what Wade was in his time in Miami with, with less scoring. I don't think much changes with Richardson. As I've said it millions of times, I think he's their best player. It does impact guys like Allington and Tyler Johnson. They will have to lose some playing time. Johnson had already started to lose some playing time anyway as when they moved Justice Winslow into that starting lineup. Wade might start next to Richardson. Johnson's going to take a hit, and he's probably not going to be a standard league guy. Uh, the same with uh, with Allington also. Just think that Wade is just going to be Dion Waiters from the start of the season. That's the sort of role that yeah, probably fewer minutes. I don't think he's playing the 30 a night. That Actually, I'm certain he won't play the 30 a night that Waiters was playing, but he can have occasional stream value, and it's not going to be a massive impact on Richardson. More on Johnson and Allington would be my guess, and uh, that eliminates Derek Jones Jr. from ever playing again. Holy shit, Orlando just traded uh, Lord Alfred Payton, I, I think, to Phoenix for a second round pick. What? Jesus. That is, okay, so DJ Augustine is a guy we look to add. He's had run before when he's got opportunity. He's not that good, but he is a guy that you add. Alfred Payton, of course, will retain similar value playing next to Devin Booker. I don't really understand it. Devin Booker is the point guard, and he should be their point guard, uh, and play Josh Jackson, TJ Warren together. I'm not, not certain I understand that, but Payton, just hold on. But yeah, DJ Augustine is the guy that is opening up uh, some value there in Orlando. Yeah, it is.
yeah, it, it's uh, well, for a second round pick. Now, I don't know exactly what the second round pick is just at this point. Um, if it's the Suns one, it could be a decent one. It could be one of the ones they've acquired in a trade, whatever. We're looking at what Peyton's value is. It's probably similar to what, what it was in Orlando. It's not like there's much changing for the team. I, I don't love what it does to, to Joshy Jackson, but I still think that you want to own him. Um, and yeah, DJ Augustine is the guy in, in Orlando now with Shelvin Mack. Um, backing him up uh, unless there's someone else there's no one else I'm missing there is that's going to play point guard even Fournier will get a little bit more um, a little bit more um, uh, ball handling responsibility but DJ Augustine is, is the big winner there I would say also uh, oh, we've got to talk about the Okaro White for Luke Babbitt trade which means absolutely nothing of course and Sheldon Mack not Shelvin Mack Sheldon Mack has been traded from the Wizards to the Hawks he is also out for the season with a torn Achilles so nothing much to talk about on those minimal uh, minimal trades, but this Peyton one is definitely interesting. A late minute, there's four minutes to go to the deadline, uh, a last minute trade. Um, Phoenix is sending a 2018 second round pick via Memphis to Orlando. So Memphis is second. So that's a good second rounder though. So that's that's not bad. You're getting a pick in the high 30 or low 30s, 33, 34, depending on when Memphis finishes. It could be the 31st pick. So there is something there. Um, something there for uh, for um, the magic, I guess, that must have been the best that they were that they were getting um, back for it. I, I still don't understand it. I think that Peyton can run stuff. They got to hope they're getting a point guard at some point, but this draft is not fully stocked with them unless they're just uh, are they banking fully on the getting themselves Luka Doncic or, or Colin Sexton. But surely you just wait until draft time to do that. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. This is fourth, yeah. Yep, that's useful. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at Augustine, we're looking at Hill, we're looking at Brooke Lopez, we're looking at Larry Nance as the big winners so far from this trade deadline. Did I miss anyone? Okay, um, yeah, so I think I would put Hill above Augustine if you're looking for point guards, and then Nance is in a, in a different category there. Hood doesn't change too much. Clarkson loses value. Um, yeah, Shelvin Mack is going to get some value. I think Augustine plays more minutes than Mack there, but that, that could change every game. That could be one of those alternate situations. So you could you could take a flower and Mack if someone grabs Augustine, but again, place that behind a George Hill ad. Um, and Shelvin is a guy that has some decent uh, games in his career. If they were playing equal minutes, I'd prefer Augustine over Mac, but the, there's some value there for you know, 14. If you're in 14 team leagues, both of those guys would be guys I'd be looking to add as well. I'm going to throw this out there about George Hill. We talk about the Cavs having locker room issues. I don't think he's a great uh, great solver of those, to be honest, from what I've heard about George Hill. We'll see how that goes. I don't think that his attitude was spot on in Sacramento. I think he's had some attitude issues or some weird uh, locker room presences in other places. Um, he's got a, obviously a weird thought in Sacramento. He went there because they wanted to compete and then he sulked about it and that was just 
a weird idea of evaluation of, of things. So we will see um, how that all how that all pans out. But I'm not sure that he is necessarily the guy that's going to solve that. Jordan Clarkson doesn't necessarily you know, strike me as, as one of those guys to do that. Larry Nance maybe he seems like he's a he's a pretty decent locker room guy. But that's that's going to be very interesting to see how all of that goes down. My phone is buzzing like crazy. I'm sure I don't know if there are any Woj bombs going off. I don't think there are. Just people asking me questions. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's just people asking me their specific, and, and I apologize for you guys who, uh, who who have tweeted me. But if I get two hundred people asking me specific ad drop questions for their team, I, I can't, I can't get to all of them. It's it's impossible for me to do that. Yes, DJ Augustine is an ad. I tweeted that out already, but I can't answer everyone's individual. Do I drop this person for this person? But I will answer this one that says Emmanuel Mudiay or DJ Augustine. To me, it's uh, it's it's Augustine. I, I would rather him. He's he's had a history of being a good player. Uh, Mudiay hasn't, and there's no necessity um, or there's no reason that Moody is going to start playing 30 minutes or anything like that. Boston is not making any deals, apparently, according to Shams. Marcus Smart is not going anywhere, um, which is not a surprise in any sense. Um... Yeah, I guess it depends on how they how they use Booker, whether they continue to use him at in his right spot, which is at point guard. I think it probably does copy hit, but in his last four games, Peyton had played under 25 minutes anyway, so it wasn't like he was getting 33 minutes a night and getting huge, huge numbers there. Uh, look, they clearly don't have a point guard because Josh Gray and Tyler Eulis aren't those guys, but unless this Booker injury is a little bit serious, which could which could bump his value up. I think it's pretty fine. And if anything, it goes up marginally. Yep. So, yeah. If you own Peyton, you just keep owning him. It's. I, th I think that look. The trade deadline has passed. We're not hearing uh, any other news come out. Um, we'll stay on for another five minutes or so to see if anything else actually uh, actually happens. But if we're going to run down it and look at it, we're looking at wins for Nance for DJ Augustine, for George Hill. Rodney Hood stays similar. Jordan Clarkson loses value. Dwayne Wade got moved. That's not changing much. Joe Johnson got moved. That's not changing much. Derek Rose is traded and waived. We've got Bruno Caboclo traded and waived. Malachi Richardson won't be in the rotation in Toronto. James Ennis, Bryce Johnson, uh, Shel Sheldon Mack, um, Luke Babbitt, Akaro White. Very, very um, little to with many of those guys. So very few very few changes there's not many guys is there any guys that you think that were standard league players that now aren't after this trade deadline i can't really think of someone who who now isn't a who was having great value and loses a ton of it it's got to be in the cleveland situation i guess yeah i agree with that Yeah, I, I agree with that. He, he was a guy that you could have owned for now just to see how it was going with ball out, but he loses a ton of his value. Everything else stays pretty similar. Isaiah Thomas stays the same. Rodney Hood, uh, yeah, pretty similar. Maybe Thomas goes up a little bit, but... Um, but that's really, the Clippers have no trade for DeAndre Jordan, as Woj stated. And this is something that, you know, I talk about it all the time on the podcast. Man, I have to trade away Jordan. He's definitely getting traded. He's a hundred, And people said it with Lou Williams as well. These guys are getting traded. And if you do, and Tyreek Evans, no trade done. Again, everyone makes panic moves. And I'm, I had multiple people ask me, I'm dropping Tyreek. Like, why? Look, he just might be back there and playing 32 minutes a night and being a top 50 guy again. DeAndre definitely getting traded. Let's go and add Boban. Let's add Montrez Harrell. 
because John Ray's definitely getting traded. Lou Williams is gone. Like this, no, this stuff just majority of the time it doesn't happen, and the majority of trades we see are the ones we don't hear about. Yes, we heard about George Hill going to Cleveland. Um, there's a different structure of the deal, but nothing else we'd ever heard of with any of these deals that actually went down today with Isaiah Thomas moving, with Larry Nance moving. Well, we heard none of these trades. So most of the time when you're making all these moves in your fantasy league based on what you assume is going to happen, it won't happen. Almost, and, and people ask me, who are you stashing in advance of the trade deadline? What moves are you making? And the answer is no one because almost, almost invariably, let's say 10% of the time you might get it right, but you probably won't. And you'll just be wasting an addition, a roster spot for something that won't happen. Boban, Harrell, these guys, like I just know, oh, my Lou Williams is going to lose so much value. I'm going to trade Lou Williams for um, Marcus Smart now because you know, Williams is going to lose all this value. You know, Tyreek, I'm dropping him so I can go and add Wayne Seldon. Like just bullshit moves. This is why I'd rather hold because the majority of these times, these things don't happen. Marco Bellinelli didn't get traded. Um, Tyreek hasn't been traded. We've got here, according to Chris Haynes, Tyreek will not be traded and stay with Memphis. There you go. So the, these, again, and I know it won't change anyone's opinion or mindset because they'll do the same thing again next year. But this is what we need to realize happens is when you hear about these trades, the majority of them don't go down. And if you're making these ridiculous sell lows on guys, it's going to bite you in the ass nine times out of 10, I would say. Do you have anything to add to that, Greg? Or am I just ranting to myself here? <laughs> oh my God. Yep. Yep. The amount of people I had that would come at me and say, oh, dude, you're crazy. DeAndre is definitely getting traded. 100% gone. Lou Williams, definitely gone. He's out of there. Don't worry about it. Like, No, that's not how any of this shit works. Like, it's, it's, just, it's just not what goes on. And we do have to realize this, that you are sacrificing yourself a lot of value in a lot of cases by assuming that something that gets mentioned just because someone goes, oh, DeAndre is going to be a free agent. The Clippers don't want to you know, get rid of him for nothing. Who knows what's going on? People like living in LA. People, oh man, why would Lou Williams accept such a low contract? You know why? Because he, he doesn't want to go to another team. He doesn't want to go through the hassle of free agency. He wants to live in LA. Sure, he can be traded, but man, he's happy just to be there. What's the difference in the end between $12 million and $10 million? If you have to take a $2 million discount or whatever you got, $8 million, you have to take a $2 million discount to stay somewhere. Who cares? Like, I'm sure I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure his two misses are, are, are totally fine with it. Like, it doesn't... This is this is fine. And this is what we need to really understand when we're looking at, at stuff from a fantasy point of view, that these trades, they don't they don't happen as, as what people may want them to or expect them to or assume that they're going to they just don't happen in that way so the guys who were definitely getting traded didn't get traded no deandre no lou williams no tyreek evans who else was definitely getting traded? marcus smart was going gotta own terry rosier because marcus smart's gone he didn't get traded kemba walker's going um um we've got to go and add billy hernan gomez because dwight howard's going to the Cavs, and they're and they're definitely selling off dwight i had that comment sent to me as well nothing happened Jesus, that was that was a crazy one when I saw that. Like that, that's insanity when someone put that out there. But yeah, this is yes, oh man, you, you got to do it because Dwight's definitely getting moved out now. And, and there's just you got to think of the logistics of this. Even just like the, the Brook Lopez one, like Brook Lopez is getting traded because he's not getting played. Like that's not how any of these things work. There's just so many, uh, so many things and so many parts of all this that that goes down. We are now ten minutes past the trade deadline. I don't see anything else. Um, happening at uh, at this point i see someone just mentioned you in, in a comment here on basketball monster asking for your thoughts on the trades in tonight's slate greg um there's going to be some huge value and i talked about this yesterday for dfs do you want to give a, a quick dfs um uh dfs uh guess thoughts on today because there's going to be lots of high scores and value yeah Yep. 
it, it, it'd be 10. Shit, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> he has he has to. No Noah. There's no joke him Noah. If we before we go, I've got this question for you. Would you be more surprised if Kylo's Quinn scores fifty tonight or twenty? Yes, me, me too. I, I think he's got a massive sh chance to go. Look, he's a guy that can have four blocks and and have eighteen points and twelve rebounds and and, and four blocks in that time, which is you know pushing up to that fifty point rather than having. Because who is going? Literally, who is playing these minutes at center? Are they going to run Beasley at center? And the other guy who was going and Beasley's going to get huge minutes because the guy who was going to play some backup power forward minutes is Doug McDermott, and he's not there anymore. So yeah. There's a, there's a lot of DFS stuff going on. Matt Smith just had one tweet as well saying so much for Julius Randle being traded. Another one of those guys. Oh, Ruin Randle's definitely going. He's definitely going. They're not. These guys, is, they're, yeah, they're not. Anyway, I'm going to go get this out so people can listen to it before today's games. Greg, you've got to go and sort out your DFS lineups. Let's wrap this up. Apologize for the technical difficulties in terms of getting this out live. I don't know what was going on. Greg, thank you for, uh, for joining me once again. I'll do it again for you. As Greg runs in, we realise this could get dangerous. There you go. One more, one more Greg drop for you. I've been waiting to get you back on just so I could put that out there. It's 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 useful for Greg One Row, but much better for you. You know where you can find this podcast, guys. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go and leave a five star review. Google Play, tune in, Stitcher, Spotify, and YouTube. I'll be back with another show later today, talking a little bit more about this, but more about the action from the day. Greg, thank you once again. Go and uh, check out Greg's podcast as well. All right, guys, we are done. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. <laughs>